السلام علیکم ایوری ون کیا حال ہے سر کچھ ڈو سملیرٹی اینڈ کانگرنس ویڈیو اوکے فرینکلی اسپیکنگ آئی ہیٹ ٹیچنگ دیٹ ٹاپک اینڈ تھینک گاڈ دے ریمونگ اٹ فرام دا سلیبس اوکے لیٹ سی دس ویک ویل یہ ویک تو ختم ہی ہو گیا جسٹ سنڈے دیٹس لیفٹ بٹ یا لیٹ سی ان دا کمنگ ڈیز اف آئی کین میک اے ویڈیو آن دیٹ سر پلیز شیئر پاس پیپرز آف ایڈ میتھس اوکے سو یو فائنڈ دا پی ڈی ایف آف دس ان دا ڈراپ آئی مین You'll find a Dropbox link in the description. Okay. May I be cheek, Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, uh, Fiza. Is that what you meant by past papers of ad maths? Yes, inshallah. AS stream will be at the same time tomorrow. Okay, so let's start, I guess. If everyone could just like the stream, I'd appreciate that. So basically, as you guys know, today's topic is a portion of vectors, and that is constant velocity. Now, let me tell you guys, This is in the syllabus. This hasn't been removed from the syllabus. I've every year I get this question that is vector is constant velocity is still part of the syllabus. The thing is, students usually confuse this with relative velocity. Relative velocity a topic hota tha kisi zamane mein 2020 mein wo bhi remove ho gaya tha. So relative velocity is no more in the syllabus, but constant velocity or resolving velocity or compose velocity ye iske different naam hai. This is still in the syllabus, okay? It's part of vectors. If you're using the IGCSC book, okay? If you're using this book right here, this one, okay? You will find it in vectors, all right? And this is the latest book. This is the book that is being used usually in schools. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing IGCSC or O-level, it's the same, okay? Now, so let's start. We will be doing post paper questions in this Uh, in this stream, I will be solving past paper questions, okay? Because I recently posted videos of this topic where I've explained all the concepts from scratch, okay? All, all the concepts of vectors and all the concepts of uh, velocity vectors as well, okay? And you'll find my notes as well in the description. So feel free to download them and uh, yeah, just feel free to use them, okay? So here's a question. This is a past paper question from, let's see. This is a past paper question from Okay, so if I remember correctly, this is from October, November. Okay, it's from October, November, 2012. Aise karke kuch hai. Okay, so let's see what it says. It says, in this question, 1O is a unit vector due east and 0,1 is a unit vector due north. At 1,200, a coast guard at point O observes a ship with position vector 16, 12 kilometers relative to O. The ship is moving at a steady speed on a bearing of 330 kilometers. Okay, so... If you just try and track the direction of the ship, so it's moving at a bearing of 330, so that means this is 90, this is 180, this is 270. So somewhere over here is 330 degrees, okay? So this is the direction in which the ship is moving. And you can see that the velocity vector has x component as negative. It's negative 5 and p. And you're given the speed. Now, if you're given the speed, Or let's say if you're given the velocity vector and you have to find out the speed. So remember, it is the magnitude of the velocity vector that gives you speed. So that means that the magnitude, which means that minus 5 squared plus p squared will give me the speed of this ship. So remember, magnitude of velocity vector gives you speed. Okay, you'll find all of this written in the notes. So 25 plus p squared equals to 10 squared, which becomes 100. 
So P square equals to 75. Now you take the square root on both sides. So P is equals to square root of 75, which is equal to what? Which is going to be equal to 5 under root 3. And there you go. That's it. That's the value of P. So important thing over here is that the magnitude of velocity vector gives you speed. Okay. Now, part two. Part two says, write down in terms of T, the position vector of the ship relative to O, T hours after 12. Ab dekho. At 12 o'clock, ye kaam tha? At 12 o'clock, ye tha 16, 12. So that means, ab jo bhi movement hogi, usme 16, 12 add hoga. Okay, because its starting point is not the origin. The starting point is 16, 12. Okay, so if it's starting from 16, 12, and now it is moving at a velocity of minus 5 and 5 under root 3. Okay, this is the velocity at which it's moving. So after t hours, kaam pe hoga ye? After t hours, the starting point plus the velocity vector into time. So that's what we're going to do. The starting point, 16, 12, plus the velocity vector into time. Because now, whatever you move, it will be 16, 12 add. Hoga. Okay? Now, how much will it move in t hours? Minus 5 and 5 under root 3 into time. It's like distance equals to velocity into time. Except that we're going to add 16, 12 because that's what the starting point is. And there you go. That's it. That's your answer. Okay? And you'll find questions like these in velocity vector questions. Okay? They're very, very common that find the position vector of the ship after this many hours or find the position vector of the ship uh, after four hours, you know, stuff like that. So this is very common and there's a standard way of solving questions like these and this is what that is, okay? Find the time when the ship is due north of O. Okay, now this is interesting. When the ship is due north of O. Now, if this is something that clicks to you instantly, that's great. But I doubt that this is something that will click to everyone instantly, okay? So there's no harm in sort of sketching out what's going on over here. So this ship is starting from a point which is 16 comma 12, okay, or 16, 12. This is the point where the ship is starting from. Here's 16 and here's 12. And as we saw earlier, this ship is moving at a velocity of five meters or uh, 10 kilometers per hour. It's moving at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour actually, okay? And it is doing in the direction of Three, it is doing in, at the bearing of 300 degrees. Okay, so yeah, say if I measure 300 degrees, so this is zero, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270. 360 here, so 300 is gonna be somewhere over here. So that means this is the direction in which the ship is sailing. Okay, now we need to find out the point at which, or the time when the ship is due north of O. Now when the ship is due north of O, that means the Y component is gonna be equal to zero. Why? Because 16 minus 5t, 12 plus 5 under root 3 into t. Okay? This is how we can track the movement of this ship. Now, if this ship reaches a point where we can say that it is north of O. Okay? Now, if it is north of O, what does that mean? If it's north of O, that means k. Sorry, not the y component, the x component. If it's north of O, that means it's going to be somewhere over here where there will be a y value, but the x value is going to be equal to zero. So north of O basically means what? Basically means that it, has, it is vertically above the point O from which it started. Now, if it's vertically above, that means the change has only happened in the vertical component, the y component. There is no change in the x component. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the x component and we're going to set it equal to zero. Okay, so this is what we are doing. We don't know what the y component is, but we know for sure that the x component is equal to zero. So 16 minus 5t equals to zero, 5t equals to 16, and what's t equal to? t is equal to, if you figure this out, t is equals to 3.2 hours, except that this is not the final answer. And the reason why this is not the final answer is because the question is asking you not the number of hours, it's asking you the time. That means the question is asking you the actual time. Okay. Now this ship started moving at 12 o'clock after three hours and 12 minutes, which by the way equals 3.2 hour, 3 hours, which by the way equals to three hours and 12 minutes. This ship is due north of O. So how will I find that out? I'll simply add 312 in 1200. So here we have 1512. So that means when the ship was due north of O, it was 1512. Okay. Now let me see if you guys have any questions. Okay, now, then it says, find the distance of the ship from O at this time. Okay, 
So distance of the ship from O at this time, how do you find out the distance? The way to find out the distance is very simple. You calculate the magnitude of the displacement. So, so far, or you can say you calculate the magnitude of the position vector. So the position vector, as we know, is 16 minus 5t, 12 plus 5 under root 3t. Now we know that the y component is equal to 0 when we plug in t equals to 3.2 because usko equal to 0 karke t 3.2 So if you plug in 3.2 again, you know for a fact that the y component is going to be equal to 0. So 0 and 12 plus 5 under root 3 into 3.2. Okay. Now if you solve this, this is what you get. And then not only will you plug this in, I mean, not only will you simplify this, you will simplify it and also take the magnitude. So zero squared plus 12 plus five under root three into 3.2. And then you will have to take the square of this. So zero square might as well just completely ignore it. This, the square and the square root cancel out. And then if you work this out using your calculator, so 12 plus five under root three, and it's only the five under root three part that gets multiplied, okay? Into 3.2 into 3.2 all right and then if you square it and then take the square root of it you know it just cancel out so the final answer is 39.7 39.7 kilometers so this is the distance of the ship from o at this time okay okay Let's do another question. Here's a question. This is from October, November, 2015. Okay. Let's see what it says. It says relative to an origin O points A, B, and C have position vectors five, four, minus 10, 12, six, minus 18, respectively. All distances are measured in kilometers. A man drives at a constant speed directly from A to B in 20 minutes. Okay. Calculate the speed in kilometers per hour at which the man drives from A to B. Okay. So what's speed equal to? Speed, as we know, is equals to distance upon time. Okay. Now, how will I find out the distance? So first things first, I need to find out the vector AB for which I'm going to do OB minus OA. And that's going to give me what? That's going to give me AB. Now let's do that. What's OB? OB is minus 10, 12. Okay. And what's OA? OA, as you can see, is 5, 4. All right. If you simplify this, you get minus 15 and you get... Eight. So this is what this is vector AB. Now, if you have the vector and now you want to find out the distance. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the magnitude. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the magnitude of vector AB, which means square root of minus 15 squared plus eight squared, which is equal to what, which is equal to, well, you can just write down the final answer. It's 17 kilometers. So now that we have the distance, the only thing that's left is time and time is given to us in the question, except that there is a catch. It's given to us in 20 minutes. So as we saw, speed equals to distance upon time. We have the distance 17. Now time ko hume convert karna padega hours mein aur wo kaise karenge? By dividing it by 60. So 17 divided by 20 upon 60 means 17 divided by 1 upon 3, which means 17 into 3. And the answer is 51 kilometers per hour. That's the first part, pretty easy. Let's see what the next part says. The next part says he now drives directly from B to C at the same speed. Okay, so B to C abo ja at the same speed. So what does the question say? Find how long it takes him to drive from B to C. So the keyword over here is same speed. And if we need to find out how long, that means we need to find out time. And time, as we know, equals to what? Equals to distance upon speed. So distance nikalne ke liye hum kya karenge? Distance nikalne ke liye hum vector BC ka magnitude lenge. A vector BC kaise aayega? Vector BC aise aayega OC minus OB karke. Okay. So let's do that. OC minus OB. That means 6 minus 18 are the C components minus OB, which happen to be minus 10 and 12. Okay. So if you simplify this, here's what you get. 16 and minus 30. These components make up vector BC. Now let's find out the magnitude of vector BC for which we will do square root of 16 squared plus minus 30 squared. So what's that gonna be equal to? That's gonna be equal to 34, okay? So we have the distance, we have the speed. Speed is something we worked out earlier. Now we can work out the time. So time is equals to the distance upon speed. So the distance is 34. The speed is, sorry, the speed is not 17. The speed is 
51. So let's work this out. I think we can simplify this using the table of three. So 34 divided by 51. So you have two upon three, two upon three hours. And there you go. That's it. That's your time. Let's see if there's another part to it. No, there isn't. Okay. Now, <coughs> sir, where can I get these practice questions from? I have solved all book questions. Okay. Uh, if you're talking about these particular questions, you can download them from, um, I've, I've shared a link in the description. Okay. You can download it from there. The videos you uploaded on vectors in the last week, do they cover all the syllabus? Yeah. So the, there are three parts to the video. Okay, first two parts are normal vectors, and the third in the third part you will find velocity vectors as well as past paper questions. S is it wise to check all past papers before pre boards? What do you mean check? Okay, you might want to elaborate on that. Um, sir, as your previous student, okay, happy for you, Ishal. Will this ad maths paper be as hard as last year's? Why do you guys ask me that question? आपको क्या लगता है कैमरेज वाले मुझे फ़ोन करते हैं पेपर बनाने से पहले कि हम पेपर आसान बनाएं मुश्किल बनाएं क्यों पूछते हैं ऐसे सवाल सर इज वैक्टर इज डिफ़िकल्ट यू टेल मी नॉट दैट डिफ़िकल्ट आई मीन यस देर आर डिफ़िकल्ट क्वेश्चंस टू दिस टॉपिक बट ओवरऑल इज नॉट दैट डिफ़िकल्ट आई टेल यू वॉट्स डिफ़िकल्ट इन एड मैथ्स इंटीग्रेशन इज डिफ़िकल्ट ओके ओकेजनली लॉक्स कैन भी डिफ़िकल्ट ट्रिग्नोमेट्री इज डिफ़िकल्ट ओके वैक्टर इज I wouldn't say it's that difficult. Occasionally, permutation and combination can also be difficult. Okay. All right. So let's do another question. This is October, November, twenty sixteen, paper two, variant three. Okay. So it says in this question, I is a unit vector due east and J is a unit vector due north. Units of length and velocity are meters and meters per second, respectively. Okay. The initial position vectors of A and B relative to a fixed point O are I plus 5J and QI minus 15J respectively. Okay. A and B start moving at the same time. A moves with the velocity of PI minus 3J and B moves with the velocity of 3I minus J. Okay. Uh, then it says, given that A travels with the speed. Okay. So why concept about A? You're given the speed. All right. And the question is asking you to find out one missing component of the velocity vector. Okay. So let's do that. Let's write down A over here. So we can see that the components of A are the velocity of, uh, the, the velocity vector of A is basically P and minus three, okay? And you're given the speed. The speed equals to what? The speed equals to five, okay? So why is it that we did earlier? P squared plus minus three squared inside the square root equals to five. So P squared, plus nine equals to 25, P square equals to 16. And although P is equal to plus minus four, but here we're gonna give plus four because as the question says, find the positive constant. Okay, so P equals to four, there you go. That's your answer. Then it says, find the direction of motion of B as a bearing correct to the nearest degree. Okay, now let's see how is B moving. So B is moving with the velocity of three I minus J. Okay, if you write it as a column vector, this is what it looks like. Now, 3i minus j means what? 3i minus j basically means the following. 3i minus j means that three units to the right and one unit down, okay? So this is the starting point, three units to the right and one unit down, okay? It's kind of that the starting point is the origin, okay? But from any point, three units to the right and one unit down. And we need to write down what? We need to write down the bearing, okay? So instead of i, I should have written one. So this is the angle that I need to find out, okay? Now, before I can find out this angle, let's calculate this angle, okay? We'll call it theta. So we have the opposite length, all right? And we have the adjacent length. What can I do? I can use tan, okay? So tan theta equals to one upon three. Now, to find theta, we'll take tan inverse of one upon three. That's gonna give you 18.43 degrees. Now, if you wanna find out the bearing, that means bearing ke liye hume isme 90 degrees or add karna plega. So 90 plus 18.43, which is equal to 108.43. But as the question says, that give your answer correct to the nearest degree. So that's just gonna be 108 degrees. And there you go. That's it. That's your answer. Okay. Welcome, Slam. 
So you can explain how to find displacement vector between a b when we have the position vectors. Okay, so that's like finding out vector a b. How do you find out vector a b if you have the position vector of a and the position vector of b? All you do is o b minus o a. Okay. Sir, will you do derivative integration pass with press? Okay. Uh, Zoha, yes, I will. Okay, I will. So I'll try and do back to back streams over the weekend, the coming weekend, and also in the middle of the week. Okay. So how many pass papers should you recommend doing per week? So I would suggest that you solve at least two sessions. That means October, November and May, June. Sir, how to learn all integration formulas? Well, just keep writing them down okay, till you have them memorized. Okay. Now here's part three. Let's see what part three says. Part three says state the position vector of A after T seconds. Okay. So A, as we know, a, as we know, the position vector of A was, it was given to us, um, I plus 5J. Okay, so I'll write it like this. I, one, I plus 5J means one and five, okay? And after T seconds basically means we have the velocity of A, okay? It's four and minus three, so plus four minus three. And if you wanna find out after T seconds, so just multiply it by T. So like I said earlier in the previous, I think, the question before this question, that this is a very common concept, okay? You'll be tested on this over and over again. So just remember how it's done, and that's it. Free guaranteed marks. Uh. Then part four says, state the position vector of B after T seconds. Okay, position vector of B. So what was the starting point of B? Let's have a look at that. Starting point of B, as you can see, is QI minus 15J. So obviously we don't have the value of Q, Q yet, so we'll write it in terms of Q only plus what's the velocity at which b is moving three and minus one okay so plus three and minus one so where will it be after t seconds just multiply it by t and there you go that's it oh, bye now although i've solved this question before but i can guarantee that if you solve enough questions you can pretty much tell where what part five is going to be okay part five mein hoga ye ke they, they will meet or they will intersect and you will have to find out the value of t at which they're intersecting and then probably you'll have to find out the value of q okay now I know this because I've done this question before, obviously, but like I said, if you do enough questions, you will know exactly what the next part is going to ask you. So then it says, find the time taken until A and B meet. So whenever the question says that they're meeting, you just equate their position vectors. I had a meet jab hi karenge jab wo ek hi point pe pahunchenge. Aur ek point pe pahunchne ka matlab that their position vector are this, that their position vectors are the same. So the position vector of A was one plus 40, five minus three T. So I've just expanded it, okay. 1 plus 40, 5 plus minus 3t, okay? And now the position vector of q will be q plus, sorry, b will be q plus 3t and minus 15 minus t, okay? Have a look here, q plus 3t minus 15 minus t. Now, because they're meeting, that means, like I said, that their position vector will be equal. Now, I, I can't solve any one of the two and find the value of t. The only equation that I can solve is this five minus three t equals to minus fifteen minus t? Q and Q ke isi equation mein ek unknown hai. Pichli jo upar wali equation hai, x components ki equation hai, usme do unknowns aa jayenge. So five plus fifteen is twenty. Twenty is equals to two t. And what's t equal to? T is equals to ten hours hai, ten seconds hai. Kya hai? Gadi ka time dena hai? Kya dena hai? Let's see. Um, so it's meters per second. So that means t is equals to ten seconds. And there you go. That's it, that's your answer. Then it says, find the position vector of the point where A and B meet. So now that you have the value of T, let's find out the position vector of A. Okay, finding out the position vector of A is as good as finding out the position vector of B because they're both equal. Okay, we can't find out the position vector of B anyway because we don't have the value of Q. So for OA, when T is equals to 10, here's what we're gonna do. One plus four into 10 and five minus three into 10. Okay, so four into 10 is 40, 40 plus one is 41. Three into 10 is 30, five minus 30 is minus 25. And there you go. That's it, that's your answer. Then it says, find the value of the constant Q. Okay, now you know that the B ka vector, hai, which is Q plus three T and minus 15 minus T is actually equal to what? When T is equals to 10, okay, it's actually equal to 41 and minus 25. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to plug in T over here. So Q plus 3 into 10 and set it equal to 
41. Okay, there's no need to use this because we need Q value. Chahiye. Q ki value is just x component. Mein. So Q plus 30 equals to 41. That means Q equals to what? Q equals to 11. And there you go. That's it. That's your answer. How many marks were question? Tha ye? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 easy marks. Okay, this was one of the easiest questions. Okay. Um, can we write velocity vectors in any way? Yeah, yeah, of course, you can write velocity vectors in any way. Sir, I have seen your videos of velocity vector, but I still could write still I could understand okay so pehli baat hai, this is not re relative velocity okay this is constant velocity or vectors in velocity okay so relative velocity is something else if you try and look for a relative velocity that's that's something else uh, minus 15 plus t nahi hoga, sir no it's gonna be minus 15 minus t it's gonna be minus 15 minus t because with mo with one you have a minus sign over here Okay, so plus minus will eventually become minus. Okay, I hope that helps. All right, Walikum Salaam Ali Hamza. Let's do another question. So this is a good question. This is from May June 2017. Paper 12. Okay, and this kind of questions are more and more. A question like this came in, came last year, May, June 2022. Okay, where the question will give you the bearing and you will have to resolve it and find the X and the Y component. Okay, so let's do this. Let's see what this question says. So this question says, vectors I and J are unit vectors parallel to the X and Y axis respectively. The vector V has a magnitude of 3 under root 5 units and has the same direction as I minus 2J, okay? Giving an answer in the form of A plus BJ where A and B are integers, okay? Now remember this. Every time you have the magnitude and the direction of the vector, okay? And then the question asks you to find a vector which has magnitude and you're given the direction, okay? I'll repeat. If a question asks you to find a vector of which you know the magnitude and the direction. So what you do is the following. You take the magnitude, okay? You take the magnitude and you multiply it by the unit vector of direction. Okay, because this velocity may be out there. The question might give you the speed and it might give you the direction in which the object is headed. So what you need to do is you need to take the speed and multiply it by the unit vector of the direction. So that's what we're gonna do over here. We have the magnitude, which is 3 under root 5. And this, I'm going to multiply by the direction of the, the unit vector of the direction. So that means I minus 2J divided by its magnitude, which is going to be 1 squared plus minus 2 squared. Okay, so let's work this out. See what do we get. So we get 3 under root 5 into I minus 2J divided by so this becomes square root of 5 okay so let's see what square root of 5 is in fact we'll leave it as square root of 5 because you can see that it's going to get cancelled out so square root of 5 and square root of 5 gets cancelled out and now you have 3 into i minus 2j which then becomes 3i minus 6j okay and you can see a and b were supposed to be integers which they are so that's great okay now Sir, can you do one-on-one -on -one classes now? No, Beta, sorry. I don't do one-on-one -on -one classes anymore. S now, here's part B. Part B says the velocity vector W makes an angle of 30 degrees with the positive x-axis and is such that W equals to 2. The magnitude of W equals to 2. So pay, very, pay close attention to this, okay? Because this is very important. Not because it's difficult or anything, because these questions like these are being tested often. Okay, it's fairly easy given that you understand. But questions like these, like I said, are being tested very often. And I'm not making a prediction over here or anything. Something like that. But trend may hai. Okay. Now, so here's W. Okay, what you see in red is W. And this basically means that the magnitude of W is 2. Okay, so the magnitude of W is equal to 2. Okay, not according to me, according to the question. 
and this same vector, the same velocity vector makes an angle of 30 degrees with the positive x axis. So that means this angle that you're looking at is 30 degrees. Okay. And now what you need to do is you need to find out, find W giving an answer in the form of root C i plus D J. Okay. That means ke aapne iska x component resolve karna or aapne iska y component resolve karna. So, you know, that's why this topic is called compose and resolve velocities because that's what you do. You're basically, you're given some information about the velocity and then you resolve it into its x and y components. Okay. So, here's the x component, here's the y component. Okay. Now, let's start with the x component. As you can see, the x component is the adjacent component. Okay. The y component is the opposite component. And this two that you're looking at is the hypotenuse. So what can I do to find out X? So adjacent and hypotenuse. So what can I use? I can use cos. So cos 30 equals to X upon two. And then if you cross multiply, so X becomes two cos 30. Okay, let's evaluate this. So two cos 30 is equals to under root three. So X is equals to under root three. Okay. Now let's talk about Y. Y, as you can see, is the opposite component. So that means we're going to use sine. So sine 30 is equals to opposite upon hypotenuse, which is 2. And then if you cross multiply, sine 30 half hota hai, half ko 2 se multiply karoge, to 1 aa jayega. Okay, and they're both going to be positive. All right. So make sure that you keep an eye out for which one's going to be positive and which one's going to be negative because they're both in the first quadrant. Okay, this vector is in the first quadrant. That means X is going to move rightwards and Y is going to move upwards. And because they're moving rightwards and upwards, they're both going to be positive. Okay, so you can sort of write this plus sign over here so that identifying that they're both positive. So when you give your final answer, here's how you're going to give it. Root 3i plus 2j. And there you go. That's it. That's your answer. Uh, sir, kiss paper mein aata hai. Okay. Um, so the thing about AdMaths is if it's, if it doesn't come in paper one, you can expect it in paper two. Okay. There is no such trend as to what paper it will come in. Okay. Uh, the whole idea of having two papers in AdMaths is so that the syllabus can be divided. Sir, is it too late now to start revising? Revising? No, obviously it's not too late for revision. But if you are doing it from scratch, then yes, of course, it's too late. Isn't 2 sine 30 equal to 1? Oh, yeah, you're right. I made that error. Thank you for pointing that out. So someone's paying attention. Um, dead shot. Okay. Thank you. Dead shot. <laughs> for... Add math, sir. I'm unable to solve trigonometric questions with the range in pi. So while doing, yeah, that's fine, Janet. That's fine. It's nothing to worry about. So y equals to one. You guys are right. Thank you for pointing that out. Actually, you know what? I was just checking. I can't attention pay kar Okay, now I'm just joking. That was a genuine mistake. Okay, let's do another question. This is from. So by the way. I challenge you guys to solve this question. Not right now, later on. Okay. This is from October, November, 2016, paper two, variant two. Okay. I challenge you guys to solve this question yourself and see if you're able to do it. If you this question, that means that's it. You don't need to do vectors anymore. Okay. At least the velocity part of it. Okay. All right. So here's another question. This is question number five from May, June, 2019. Let's see what it says. So it says a particle P is moving with a velocity of 20 meters per second. Okay. Uh, in the same direction as three, four, find the velocity vector of P. So this is what I was talking about a Okay. That all you have to do is find, in order to find out the velocity vector, take the magnitude, which is speed, multiplied by the unit vector of the direction. So that means three I plus four J. And it's the magnitude. So that it becomes the unit vector, three squared plus four squared. So 20 into three I plus four J over five, five ones are five fours are. So here we have 12 I plus 16 J, which of course you can write it nicely as 12, 16. And there you go. That's it. That's your answer. Uh, Batman Merch Consilio. Okay, so there's this website called, company called Protease. They have really good t-shirts. Now, here's part two. 
Part two says at time t equals to zero, p has a position vector one two relative to a fixed point o. Write down the position vector of p after t seconds. So why is that all here? So one two is the starting point. In it, you add the velocity vector, which is twelve and sixteen. And since we have to write down the position vector of p after t seconds, so you just multiply it by t. Okay. All right. Then it says a particle q has position vector seventeen eighteen. Okay. So let's write down the information about q. And has a velocity vector of uh, eight and twelve. Given that p and q collide, okay. So what happens when they collide? Right. In the meantime, I'm going to write down the position vector of q. Okay. So tell me what happens when they collide. Seventeen eighteen plus eight and twelve times t. And so while we're at it, let's oops. Let's bring the position vector of p here as well. O p. सर ये क्वेश्चन अपने वीडियो में सोल्व किए हुए हैं कैन वीडियो अनी अदर क्वेश्चन ओके आई सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन और राइट ओके सो चलो आफ्टर दिस वी विल डू अ वी विल डू क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम मे जून ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ओके यप वी इक्वेट दम ओके वी ओके रोहान दानी वी इक्वेट दम राइट सो सेवनटीन प्लस एट टी एटीन प्लस ट्वेल्व टी ओके एंड दिस इज इक्वल टू वर्ट दिस इज इक्वल Two plus sixteen t. Okay, so now when you equate them, here's what happens: seventeen plus eight t equals to. Just a second, yeah. Seventeen plus eight t equals to one plus twelve t. Okay, so let's bring this together and solve this. So you'll get a up to four t equals to seventeen minus one, which is sixteen. And what's t equal to? T is equals to four. Okay, four seconds. And there you go. That's it. That's your answer. Uh, in fact, that's not the final answer because we also have to find out the position vector of the point of collision. So you can just take O Q. Okay, find out the position vector of O Q. So seventeen, eighteen, plus eight and twelve, and multiply it by the value of t, which we just worked out to be four. Okay, so if you work this out, here's what you get: seventeen plus eight into four is thirty-two, and eighteen plus twelve into four is twenty-four forty-eight. So seventeen plus thirty-two is going to be forty-nine. Okay, and forty-eight plus eight is fifty-six sixty-six. So sixty-six, and there you go. That's it. That's your answer. Said so I'm struggling with past papers, but my concepts are clear. What should I? Okay, so just keep solving past papers. Okay, keep solving past papers. Eventually. You will find that momentum that you're looking for. Concept as a whole time when you're solving fast papers, you do find them tricky initially, but eventually you find your momentum. So don't stop. Okay, don't think that I need to go back and do yearly fast papers. No, you don't need to do that. Just solve. Keep on solving them. Okay. All right. So here's a question which I want to solve. Sir, in question t equals to zero, what do you mean? T equals to zero. Okay, now I'm going to solve this question. This is fairly recent. In fact, it's quite recent. It's from May June 2022, paper two, variant two. Okay, this question is, which I mean, this paper is which last year I had. Okay, and last year as well, I had students telling me that should we do this? Is this still part of the syllabus? You know, last day, till I got messages coming that said, "Yeah, relative, no, uh, constant velocity. What is it? The syllabus is removed. Not done. So if you have people around you who you think are unaware so i would suggest that you do them a favor and just tell them that this hasn't been removed from the syllabus okay it's still pretty much part of the syllabus all right okay now is question ko dekhe and let's see what it says so again you can see that you have a concept of vectors and here you're given the bearing okay so you have to find this out through bearing now how do we do this let's see So the first question says that I mean the first part says in this question i is a unit vector due east and j is a unit vector due north okay so ye to was a formality hai okay this is just a formality that the question tells you i is a vector due east and j is a vector due north okay a cyclist rides at a speed of 4 meters per second on a bearing of 15 degrees write the velocity vector of the cyclist in the form of xi plus yj where x and y are constants okay so it's only telling you that they are constants it's not telling you whether they are integers or anything like that okay just that they are constants yeah sorry wo mere shortcut ki wajah se camera disable ho gaya tha khair 
in the previous question t was equal to zero but we didn't consider it y okay what are you talking about okay no 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 t was not equal to zero the starting point was 17 18 so it says a particle q has position vector 17 18 okay at time t equals to zero so that means this is the point where it's starting from why because at this point time is equals to zero okay so i hope that helps all right now let's come back to the question that i'm solving so let's see what exactly is the situation with this cyclist so this cyclist has a bearing of 15 degrees okay and speed jo hai in ki wo hai 15 okay so single arrow so the bearing is 15 sorry uh, speed 4 a bearing 15 hai. so that means this is what the situation is here's 15 degrees okay and this vector that you're looking at is four meters per second let me just make it slightly larger okay so this vector like i said you're looking at is four meters per second and what you need to do is you need to resolve the velocity that means you need to find out the x and the y component okay so let's break it down into x and y so there you go here is the x component here is the y component so what's this vector going to be sorry what's this angle going to be 90 minus 15 which is equal to 75 now let's talk about x so x as you can see is the adjacent and 4 is the hypotenuse so that means cos 75 equals to adjacent over hypotenuse okay so adjacent is x hypotenuse is 4 so let's cross multiply x is equals to 4 cos 75 okay ye kya gaya? Ye hamara x component a gaya. now let's talk about the y component the y component as you can see is the opposite side of the triangle so for this we're going to use sine so sine 75 equals to y upon 4 and then if you cross multiply so y turns out to be 4 sine 75 okay and then when you write them in vector form this is what it looks like 4 cos 75 i because this is the horizontal component plus 4 sine 75 j because this is the vertical component and i do not recommend that you change this to decimal okay just leave it as it is leave it in um, sine and cos form okay exact form basically Okay. My appreciation for <laughs> Okay. Thank you, I guess. Now here's part B. Part B says a vector of magnitude on a bearing of 300 degrees is added to a vector of magnitude on a bearing of 230 degrees to give vector V. Find the magnitude and bearing of V. Now this question is a lot of students. Ko okay. A lot of students question a lot In fact, a lot of people weren't even sure of their answer i'll see if i can pull out the mar the examiner report of this question and read it out with you guys so basically this is a difficult question why because you have to resolve two vectors one by one and then add them and not even that then find the magnitude and the pairing okay so there's a lot of work five marks even for five marks it's a lot of work okay now first of all let's talk about the first vector Okay, now the first vector has magnitude 6 and is heading uh, and is on a bearing of 300 degrees. So what does that look like? Let's mark it. So perceptibility we make our north, east, west, south. All right. And now let's pick another color to represent the vector. Let's pick the color green, in fact. Okay. So bearing of 300 degrees. So here's 0, here's 90, here's 180, here's 270, and here is 300. Okay. So either our vector is going to be on a bearing of 300 degrees. So and the magnitude is 6. Now let's break this down into x and y. Okay. So this as you can see is the x component. And this as you can see is the y component. Now let's find out what this angle is going to be. In order to find out this angle. Since the bearing is 300 degrees. That means this angle is going to be 60 degrees. That means this angle is going to be 30 degrees. Or what you could have done is. You could have simply subtracted 270 from 300. Okay. So in any case the angle 30 degrees. I hope you guys know your bearings well. Okay bearing has been has now been f is now being frequently tested in that maths as well okay not like formal bearing the way it is that we see it in math but you know in between vectors so let's talk about x now bear in mind that x will be negative over here why negative because it's heading leftwards okay so if i want to find out the value of x since x is the adjacent side that means i'm going to use cos so cos 30 equals to x upon hypotenuse so x equals to what x is equals to 6 cos 30 since it's not the exact answer so i can write it in insert form 
So minus three onto root three. Why minus? Because like I said, it's heading leftwards. Now let's talk about y. Okay, y will be positive because it's heading upwards. So y is the opposite side. That means in order to calculate y, I will use sine. So sine 30 equals to opposite over hypotenuse. And then if you work out the value of y, that turns out to be equal to three. So y is equals to three. And y, since it's because it's upwards, like I said, that means it's going to be positive. So this vector is basically minus three under root three i plus three j. Okay, now this is only part of the work that's done. Okay, now we need to talk about the other vector. Okay, and the other vector has a bearing of 230 degrees and the magnitude two. Okay, now first let me see if you guys have any questions here. Don't we have to calculate sine and cos in the end in previous question? No, you don't. Okay, you don't have to do that. All right, just leave it over here. That's good enough. Okay. All right, so as I was saying, now let's talk about the other vector, okay, for which I'm going to use the color red, which has magnitude two and a heading on a bearing of 230 degrees. Okay, so let's plot that. So a bearing of 230 degrees means what? Let's see. So here's 90, here's 180, here's 270. Uh, sorry, here's, here's zero, here's 90, here's 180, here's 270. 230 basically means slightly less than 270. Okay, so the magnitude is two. And since this is 230 degrees, I say, you know, 230 degrees. So what's this angle going to be? This angle is going to be 270 minus 230, which is 40 degrees, okay? So this also, we need to break it down into X and Y and bear in mind that X and Y, both of them here will be negative. So X will be negative and Y will also be negative here. Okay, why? Because it's leftwards and downwards, all right? Now let's talk about X. So X, as you can see, is the adjacent side and we have the hypotenuse side. So that means we're gonna use cos. So cos 40 equals to X upon two. So X is equals to two cos 40. And in the end, it's gonna have a minus sign. Why? Because it's going leftwards. Now let's talk about Y. So Y is the opposite side. That means we're gonna use sine. So sine 40 equals to Y upon two which means y is equals to two sine 40. And this also at the end is going to be negative because it's heading downwards. So minus two sine 40 J. Okay. Now, now that we have the two vectors, what we need to do is we need to add them up, then find the magnitude and then find the bearing. Okay. So this vector and this vector. Okay. So let's switch to a neutral color and add them. So minus three under root three I Okay, plus 3j plus minus 2 cos 40i plus minus 2 sine 40j. So let's get all the i's and j's on one side. So minus 3 under root 3i minus 2 cos 40i. Okay, now we have to do the i. Okay, to make life easy. Plus, now let's talk about all the j's. So 3 minus two sine 40, okay? This ka bhi j hum bahar likh lete hain, okay? So what do we have now? We now have the vector, okay? Now I think it's a good idea to evaluate their decimals, okay? So minus three under root three minus two cos 40, okay? So here we are, we're looking at minus 6.728. Now, since it's not the final answer, I would suggest that you don't round it off, okay? <coughs> plus three minus two sine 40, okay? So plus 1.714J, okay? Now we need to find out the magnitude. So square root of minus 6.728 squared plus 1.714 squared, okay? So squared plus the square of 6.728, okay? Then you take the square root of the answer. So here you have 6.94. So the magnitude is 6.94, okay? This is the magnitude. Now that's not the end of the story. We now have to find out the bearing as well. Achha, bearing nikal ne ke liya. X is negative, that means it's going leftwards and Y is positive, that means it's going upwards. So negative and upwards, all right? So this length is 
seven to eight and this length is one point seven one four okay and we also have the magnitude okay but there's no need to use that since we have enough information anyway okay all right now finding out the bearing basically means finding out this angle okay finding out this angle and finding out in order to find out this angle the first thing we need to do is we need to find out this angle, which is theta. Obviously, we're going to use tan. So tan theta equals to 1.714 over 6.728. Now, let's see what theta is equal to. 1.714 divided by 6.728. Let's take the tan inverse of the answer. So here we are. We're looking at 14.292. In this, we're going to add 270. Okay, so plus 270. So now the bearing is... 284.3 degrees since this is an angle an angle as you know is always given correct to three significant figures okay so there you go sorry not three significant figures correct to one decimal place unless it says otherwise in the question no it doesn't so any angle is given correct to one decimal place okay now what are your thoughts what are your thoughts on this question Okay, no, I'm not going to do the Edmonton Wala question. That's a challenge question for you guys. Okay. <laughs> Sir, are you doing online session for IGCS math? You mean like right now? Well, no, right now I'm doing at maths. Yes, the question is easy, but it's too much work. Yeah, I agree with that. So, Han, I completely agree with that. The question is easy. Okay, I mean... Technically, you're only using trigonometry and you're using a bit of coordinate geometry, okay? But it's lengthy. And because sometimes the question is lengthy, we kind of lose track and our concentration gets compromised. That means we end up making an error. Okay, uh, I think I've already answered that question that if you're, if you're struggling with past papers, then just keep on solving them, okay? Eventually, you'll find your momentum. And just keep track of your errors. You'll notice that you're not making some serious conceptual errors that you need to be concerned with. Okay. Uh, you'll notice that you're probably making just not exactly, well, something like careless errors. Okay. Or one thing that you can do is when you're solving past papers, initially, this is something that I always recommend. You can keep the notes in front of you. Okay. Solve a few past papers like that with your notes in front of you. And you don't know, take as long as you have to. And then eventually you'll find your momentum and make sure that you then complete the paper in the given time and also you don't have to open your notes. So could you please do live streams? Yeah, I did a stream yesterday on mensuration and I do have more streams planned inshallah, so don't worry about it. Okay, now let's, let's see if you can do any more question. Okay, now I will recommend you guys to solve the remaining questions. All right, ye question dobara agya, so I'll just delete it. Okay. Huh, ye question, I don't know why it's But yeah, I will recommend you guys. So there are technically just two questions left from this worksheet. Okay, one is this Edmund Town question, which I really want you guys to try okay this is a challenge question and then there is this question which is fairly easy okay this is also fairly pretty recent it's february march 2022 okay all right so let's keep it till here only and i will inshallah see you guys soon i'll share the next set of streams inshallah on my instagram but suggest the next topic what's the next topic that you guys think i should stream as far as ad maths is concerned Sir, do you do one-on-one -on -one classes? No, I don't do one-on-one -on -one classes. Yes, Rohan, I do enjoy teaching. Transformation. Okay. Transformation, I have made a playlist recently. 
Okay, everything everything's covered. Yeah, I'm going to fight crime now. <laughs> Just getting the Batmobile ready. In fact, here it is. Here's my Batmobile, in case you're interested. It's made out of Lego. So what will be the next stream for O-Levels? Well, that's what I'm asking you guys. But thank you, next stream. One whole past paper in the next. Okay, I will be doing past papers. Don't worry about that. Uh, kinematics, logs and exponential. Okay. Yeah, how about logs? Logs is a good suggestion. Logs can have past paper questions. Kar sakte hai, solve. Okay, integration key, I recently did a stream, uh, area under the curve. Okay, let's do logs. Yeah, logs sounds good. Fine, done again. Okay. Next stream, inshallah, will be of logs. Okay. Trigonometry, be curling it, don't worry. So all the difficult topics, inshallah, I will stream before the CI exam. When, I can't guarantee that. But yeah, I will for sure. Okay, that's something I can guarantee. Okay, boys and girls, I'll stop here. So take care. Have fun.